What's going on? Ryan Troy back with another video for you today. And in this video, I'll be going over a Lightroom hack. Now, I feel like this hack is very important because I feel Lightroom is starting to lose a lot of their customers to capture one for this very same reason. A lot of people feel like the photo they see on the back of their camera doesn't look the same when they upload it into Lightroom. They feel like Capture One has better color accuracy from their camera. Now, if you have been going through the same thing where you have a session, you look on the back of your camera, everything looks perfect. And then when you get it into Lightroom, the colors appear a little bit more dull. You may go through a few pictures and it looks like it's supposed to look, but then it just switches to this dull image, right? I'm going to show you exactly how you change that. Now, this is what I want to challenge you. If you already knew this, I want you to tell me in the comments below. I already knew this, but this, this is something that you've been wanting to know and it helps you, which it should. This should help any photographer out there. All we want is our colors to be accurate, our photos to be exactly what we see when we take our photos. If this helps you, make sure you leave this video with a like. And also, if you ain't subscribed, what you waiting for, man? Just, just go do that just to do it. Now, let's head on over to Lightroom and I'll show you how we get this done. Now, this is the image that we'll be working on today. This is a photo I took of Victoria a little while ago, and the colors of this image doesn't represent the colors shown on the back of my camera screen. Now, let me make sure I say this first. I made a video a little while ago speaking on the importance of sRGB when uploading our photos to the web. It's important to export our photos in sRGB. That's a color space. I don't want you to get this confused with what we're doing now. Now, let me explain it like this. If you shoot JPEG, all of the information is baked in. So you probably don't have this problem, right? Your colors probably look accurate. But if you shoot raw, the reason why the file size is so huge is because of all the information that it has and all the things that we can do to tweak it. We could change the white balance. We can do a lot of different things. Our cameras have something called a color profile. And whether you have a Nikon, a Sony, a Canon, they're all different. And a lot of people refer to this as a company's color science on how they choose to color their images. Canon, they say, has some of the best color science. Doesn't have the best dynamic range, but they have some of the best color science. Now, when we bring our photos onto Adobe, the profile that it gives it is the Adobe color profile. OK, and if you were to click this, you see Adobe color, landscape, portrait, standard and vivid. Now, when we shoot, we don't shoot in Adobe Color. That's not part of our camera profile. Now they have this setting in here. It's baked into Lightroom, but they hide it from us. And I'm going to show you how you get into it. So you come over here and you click these four little squares, right? And right here, you'll see Adobe Raw and you'll see camera matching. Now, this is where we get our camera's profile. And you click that down. And when you do, you see all of these different things right here. Now with these, what I'm, what you're looking at right here may not be what you're looking at on your screen, because like I said, I shoot Nikon. These are the Nikon profiles. If you shoot Canon, it may be called something different. Now you don't have to necessarily know which profile you shoot in Canon. I mean, if you did know it would, it would help, but you have the option of being able to click one and see now instead of just choosing this and going to the next photo and keep doing this what we can do is we could come here where you see the star to highlight it and add it to our favorites usually i shoot neutral and i shoot standard okay so i click both of those with the star and then i press close now when i choose profile i will see my camera profile there as well so i'm going to pop this over into standard just so you can see the way the colors change okay so this is Adobe color right here. And now this is camera standard. This is the way it looks on the back of my screen of my camera. Now you may not feel this looks different. Here's a before and after basically. This is Adobe color on the left and this is my Nikon standard on the right. But I'm gonna show you where you can see a huge difference. Now I'm gonna pop on my page smile preset which is my favorite preset. If you don't know by now, I use this preset for all of my outdoor stuff. It makes everything vibrant. It's just a good preset for the spring and for the summertime. I have that link down below. Make sure you check it out. So let's put on my page smile preset. And here it goes right here, right? 
Now this is what I want to show you. This is in the camera standard for me. If I was to take this and put this to Adobe Color, and I'm talking not changing no settings whatsoever. All I'm going to do is change the profile back to Adobe Color, okay? Look how dull that became. And the vibrance on this is still at 54 like it was on the other one, but look how dull that is compared to when I take this and put this into camera standard. Doesn't that just look like a way better image? It does. So I hope that this helped you out a little bit. Um, if so, like I said, go ahead on and leave a little comment below and, and let me know, hey man, you saved my life. And if you already knew about this, go ahead on and let me know I showed up late to the party. All right, make sure you leave this video with a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new here. And we'll get back to more videos later. Have a good day. Peace.